And we are live. And Welcome. We are and we are live. We certainly are. Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of digital fate. I'm Richie, and this is Capricorn's very first live stream. So, welcome to the stream. If you're joining us live, thanks for being here. If you're watching this later, thanks for nothing. I'm joking. I'm joking. Thanks anyway. Um, so, really quick, I'm just going to get this out of the way. The majority of the reason that we're doing this stream is mostly just a test stream. Uh, to learn what the differences are between streaming on YouTube and streaming over on Twitch. We normally stream on Twitch every Monday through Friday. Um, and we upload our deck techs over on YouTube. So this is the very first YouTube stream. We're uh, working out the kinks, figuring out how it works, that kind of thing. But uh, thanks to anyone that's, uh, that's checking it out. I appreciate you. Uh, we are almost to 600 now. This is supposed to be a 500 subscriber celebration stream. And by the time it happened now, I believe, I believe we're at about 570. 569, actually. Let me pop right over real quick. So we're at 569 subscribers right now. Once we get to 1,000, uh, I've been saying this at the beginning of all of my videos on YouTube lately. Uh, once we get to 1,000, we're going to do a 24-hour marathon celebration stream. And that stream in particular is going to be very special. I'm not sure I'm not sure if we're doing that on YouTube or Twitch. My original idea was to do that over on YouTube, over here, where we are right now. Um, but I'm not 100%. I'm not 100%. It really it really depends on where the community is at and um you know what the community wants. If more people are over on Twitch and want me to uh do it over there, then I'll probably do that. It's it is a celebration of 1000 subscribers on YouTube though, so I think as a default the idea is to do it here on YouTube. Or maybe I'll simulcast. I don't know. I haven't I haven't completely figured that out yet. But we are closing in fast. Like I said, we're almost to 600 now, and this this stream in particular was supposed to be celebrating 500, so everything's coming extra quick. Um, let me see what else we got here. Bandy boy is sleeping over there on the couch, piled up in blankets. Bandy's happy. Bandy's a good boy. All right. Let's see what's going on in the arena. Hello, store. What's new in the store? Let's check it out. Ooh. A draft token. Uh, yeah, I'll take a draft token. But let's see. It's 150 gems cheaper. Or... Six, three thousand two hundred and fifty coins cheaper. Let's do some quick math, shall we? Let's do some quick math. Where's my calculator? One moment, guys. One moment. There you are. So it's 150 cheaper in gems, and it's 3,250 cheaper in coins. Off. And then I 
think that's a much better cost reduction on coins than gems. So we're just going to spend our coins here. Grab this bad Larry. Hey, it's Izzy. How are you, Izzy? Welcome to the stream. We are, uh, we're doing all the things. How have you been? Have you been playing much magic lately? Try and turn this into 750 here. I got some packs to open. Alright. Got a rare wild card. Nice. You've been really busy trying to get bills and other stuff done. I feel you, Izzy. Things have been kinda crazy for me too. I have a really big concert coming up on Wednesday with Carnifex and Oceano and Spite. And I've I've been very anxious about it, to be honest. Just a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility. The norm. But hey, we're playing Magic. What is, the, what is this Ultimate Showdown thing? Oh, this is that Timmy, Johnny, Spike, Vorthos thing. I don't know if we're interested in that. Let's start off with some, uh, some standard ranked here. Just get a couple games under our belt. And, uh, see what's popping. So this is my newest deck. It's been kind of insane. So the the idea is... Radadrabic is pretty broken with Jaxus, Ao, and Junji. If Ao dies, it can find another Radadrabic. If Junji dies, it can get Radadrabic back from the yard. If you get a Jaxus in play, it can copy Rotodrobic. The copy immediately dies and then becomes a non-legendary version of Rotodrobic. So there's all these ways to either protect or fetch or get back your Rotodrobic, so you just can't get rid of them. And while they're in play, you do all these crazy shenanigans and, and copy triggers and make multiple copies of Rotodrobics which then allow you to sack other things and make multiple copies of those and get all the death triggers. And people have been using Radadrabic with the dragons for their death triggers already. Um, but this deck kind of takes it a step further, I feel. There's there's another element I'm trying to introduce, which is sort of a slight, a slight tweak into sort of like a, a zombie tribal thing going on. So we've got Geralf here, which will give all of our zombies flying. And all of our legendaries that die with Radadrabic on and come back as non-legendary copies, they are zombie versions. So they'll all get flying. And with Radadrabic, they'll also all have Vigilance. Which means we can be swinging in with a bunch of flying 2-2s two with Vigilance and still hold them back as blockers. And when they block, most of them have death triggers like the dragons. So it can be a lot of, a lot of value and really powerful. We're also using Felstinger because it's something that can sacrifice other stuff. Uh, so if we have Radadrabic on the board and we just need to trigger some death triggers from like dragons or we just want to make extra copies of legendaries with Radadrabic and they need to die right away, we just sack them to Felstinger, draw some cards, and then it's also a zombie. So it's going to get flying from Geralt. It's going to get vigilance from Radadrabic. Nice little extra synergy there. And then just a bunch of really good... Really good legendaries. Uh, Jadar makes us zombies. That gets gets the extra value. And also gives us something to sacrifice if we don't want to get death triggers. If we don't have uh, just the right cards out to really get the most out of that. We have some sacrifice fodder from the decayed zombies. Um, we've got Rite of Oblivions because we want most of the deck to be legendary creatures. Um, but we do need a little bit of removal. So Urtai... Uh, each of these rights is going to count as, as two pieces of removal, basically. So we've got three of those, and then we get to sacrifice something which normally we can benefit from because of our Radadrabic and Death Trigger shenanigans. Uh, Ludovic's the other interesting inclusion here. He's a 4-4 four, four. Uh, when he flips. That's a zombie, but that also gains all of the abilities from whatever you exile in your yard. 
So that's kind of cool. He can get all of the zombie bonuses like flying and vigilance. Um, and become extra copies of things like Radadrabic. Uh, very cool card. So, this is sort of what we've been messing with. And what's cool about this, this version of the deck is it's basically an Orzhov deck. It's white-black. And the only blue or red cards in the whole deck are Legendary and Humans. Which means Plaza of Heroes can make whatever color they need. Secluded Courtyard can make whatever color they need. Which is nice. And so the only cards that aren't legendary and human at the same time, that are either legendary or human or to a limited extent neither, um, are black and white cards. Which is why the majority of our mana base is kind of tilted towards black and white with the Sanctums and the Caves of Koilos. Izzy likes the new Arvad. It is a pretty cool card. But trying to get some sort of job but japan still says no unfortunately also seeing if public schools are even worth it for my kids and my tiredness is through the roof yeah i know the feeling is he i've been freaking exhausted we had to move i don't know if you noticed but this is actually a new house that's another thing to bring up um Every single video I've done up until the last deck tech that I just posted, they were all from uh, where I used to live. So that, that last deck tech I posted, the Kami War deck, that one I did here. That was the first deck tech I did at my new house. And this, this live stream right here is only the second time I've done anything on YouTube from this house. Well, that's not, a, that's not entirely accurate because... I did do the shorts. I don't know if anybody's seen the shorts that I did. Um, spoiler season card shorts. So I did one for Urza, one for Mishra, and one for Kayla. Queen Kayla Bin Krug. Uh, check those out up, up on the channel if you haven't already. Depression doesn't feel great. Yes, I agree. But this is my humble abode. It's set up very similarly to the old place. So, you might not notice until you look closer that it's different. And it's it's not even completely set up. I've still got boxes everywhere, as you can see over there. And all of my collectibles and stuff and, and posters and everything like that aren't, aren't up on the walls or the shelves yet, as you can kind of see behind me. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, we're here. We're moved in. We're exhausted. We're playing Magic. So let's play a game. And I do need my coffee. Where is my coffee? Hold on. Hold on. Where's my coffee? Bandit, did you steal my coffee? Don't lie to me. Don't you lie to me, boy! We don't want to be that guy. We don't want to rope our opponent every day. Can we keep this? A couple three drops. Yeah. We want our lands early if we can get them early, so I think this is fine. Oh, I'm in the wrong scene. One moment. There we go. So, two Caves of Koilos, Plaza of Heroes, Xander's Lounge, Rada Drabic, Geralt, Felstinger in the opening hand. Not optimal, but fine. We did top deck a Jadar, and that's pretty good. We'll lead with the Xander's Lounge. Twice a week at best. I feel you, Izzy. Your latest deck is Orzhov Splash Green, and it's Explorer Legal, so no alchemy crap ruining it. 
Very cool. Alright, we do have a two drop here. We're gonna jam this plaza and get Shadar out. <sighs> Alright. Cruel Celebrant Ellis deck where you go wide and wipe. That sounds wonderful. What's the green for? What is the green for, my friend? Alright, Fable of the Mirror Breaker comes down with a Blood Tithe Harvester out. Not exactly what we want to see. This Rafine's Tower is not coming down, down for quite a while. Let's see. Geralt or Felstinger? I think we want Geralt. Felstinger will be good to sac sacrifice the 2 2. But with Geralt, we can fly over every turn and also block whatever he's got pretty easily. Felstinger probably would have just traded with the 2 2 here. That might have been worth it. Hard to say. Alright, Versix. I'm waiting for you. We're gonna give him the shrug. If he keeps it up, we're gonna give him the whistle, guys. That slide whistle. It's coming. We'll just do this. See if he wants to use removal on it. Radadrabic next turn is going to be pretty good. Shieldred. Oh, dude. Hmm. Do we want Radadrabic? kind of feel like we need death touchdown also leaves us a blue to sacrifice something to Geralt if we want so we're gonna take six there it's gonna be painful but it's all right he will survive. So what we end up doing now is we end up sacrificing the decayed zombie to Geralt to make... Oh wait, we can't sacrifice it, Atopian. Ignore that. This deck's very, very new, so I'm still kind of getting used to the way the cards will interact with each other. for a second. I guess we just block here. Probably want to save the Fell Stinger to keep Shieldred from swinging. Ow. Well, that puts us in a pretty big pickle. It's not unwinnable, though. Maybe it is now. Sure. We'll let it die. So, if we go to four means we can't take any damage. Huh. 
How do we want to do this? I think we actually have to go... AO this turn. Uh, except it's going to cost us two life, so we can't. Oh wait, no, the plazas. The plazas can make it. We gotta go AO this turn so that we can Radadrabic Jaxus or Radadrabic Ludovic the next turn. It's not great. We're pretty close to dead. The more I think about it, the more I think uh, playing Geralt on 3 instead of Felstinger was probably a mistake. But it is what it is. Alright, we'll just move on to the next game. That was a super weird game to start off with. The deck is pretty crazy, though. We just had a really weird curve. Let's do one more. I don't want to play this too much, because this is probably going to be a deck tech soon. Once I work out the kinks. And, uh... You know... It's definitely not in its final form. It's very early days. We'll keep seven. Um, you didn't tell me what the green splash was, right? The last thing you said was, it's a cruel celebrant Ellis deck where you go wide and wipe. But I am super interested in what the green splash is, Izzy. Alright, Shattered Sanctum. Just put it out there to die. It's fine. It's fine. Do we Raffine? Or do we know he's gonna kill everything? And we can't Raffine. And maybe we Ludovic? Nah. Just use up all of our mana. Especially because Raffine is Ward 1. Which means the earlier we get Raffine out, the better a chance we have that it doesn't get targeted. At least for one turn. Let's see. How do I want to do this? Carol, Ludovic. I guess we can swing first, right? We might get a land. No land. We'll get rid of uh, Jaxus. Let's just play Thalia. Help protect Raphine more. So it's essentially as if it has Ward 2 now. Which is nice. He has been ramping, so he can probably deal with it, but... Highly doubt he can sweep. Alright. I think... Three, four... Yeah, we're gonna swing with everybody. We're gonna target Thalia. We're gonna discard an AO. Do I discard? I guess the expensive stuff, right? Makes sense. Four three first strike. Seems pretty good. Then we'll go with uh, Rafine. And we'll toss out. I think we'll just toss out a Geralt here. So it seems like, for the most part, this stream's going okay. It seems very similar to Twitch, actually. Which is kind of interesting. For some reason, I was expecting it to be very different. 
and not know how to do certain things in the moment like I do with Twitch because I'm kind of inexperienced with YouTube as far as live is concerned. But uh, it's just been kind of, kind of the same, same old, same old. It's been whatever. No blocks. Take the four. It's only going to be four this turn. Courtyard. Human. Let's see. I think... I think we need to just get Ao in there. The counters on Rafine. Because Rafine's the hardest to kill. Discard three cards. We'll go right. We'll go Denik. I guess. I don't know. What are we playing this turn? We'll do that. We have an abundance of riches here. <laughs> uh, no. The only ones I saw were It's a Cruel Celebrant Ellis deck where I go wide and wipe. And then the next message was Do you like my green splash? And then the next message was Did that message go through? Alright, so we finally killed the fiend. Which is fine. I think we're just gonna slam AO here. Gonna... You have Coco to help go wide. And Gaia's blessing to tell Mill to F off. Fair enough. I guess Coco makes sense, yeah. That's smart. How are you feeling about the new Brothers War cards that were spoiled? Urza and Mishra are kind of... Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. No Radadrabic. What does this deck do when it can't Radadrabic? You know? I do not know. We'll swing in for some damage. He's got a block. Hey, it's for sure, dude. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. I know we're we're uh, we're celebrating 500 subscribers, and uh, <laughs> we're almost to 600. By the time I got the the 500 sub celebration stream going, we're almost to 600, which I guess is a good problem to have, right? All right, so we'll kill we'll kill the sapperling here. It's fine. But I appreciate you hanging out, being here gonna tear ass my AO? No, you're not. We're gonna sack it to Geralt. Edge value, baby. We're gonna find... I guess Kyode? Now, as long as Kyode is in play, Geralt cannot be killed. Uh, let's get out Jaxus for next turn. Since we don't have Radadrabic, we kind of have to just play Jaxus organically and get value off him that way. Um, because if we sacrifice him at end of turn and then he's just gone forever, that's no, that's no bueno. We don't want that. 
Hey, what's up, Finn? Appreciate you. Izzy says, also have authority of the consoles to stop aggro and Tainted Remedy to stop life gain and Kumaros to stop the Very cool. Meat hooks. Doesn't kill everything, though. Doesn't kill everything. Man, this deck has been weird. Uh, I guess we pick human again. I guess we just play Denik. And, uh... We leave up a blue. And play Jadar. And we swing in for four. Puts him at five. So, uh... We'll end the turn. I've been brewing this deck lately. And I have iterated, iterated on it multiple times. And uh, right now... It's in a pretty good spot. Four AO... Four Junji, four Jaxus, and four Radadrabic is the core. Originally, I was worried that relying that heavily on Radadrabic was going to make the rest of the deck kind of meh sure. if you don't get the Radadrabic, or if they deal with the Radadrabic. Um, but I realized all of those cards either help you find Radadrabic or help you get back Radadrabic or help you protect Radadrabic and it makes it makes it a lot less meme and a lot more real I think we just win sack you And we will swing. Does he have removal? Nope. Alright. We got there. We got there without even finding Radadrabic. So. Let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at it real quick. I don't want to spend too much time on this deck in particular on this stream because this is going to be the next deck tech uh, and it's not the final version yet but AO when it dies can find a Radadrabic off the top what is it 5? 7? off the top 7 Junji when it dies can get back a Radadrabic from the yard and Jaxus can just make another Radadrabic so that even if they kill one of the Radadrabics, you still have a Radadrabic. And it works perfectly well with Radadrabic because it comes into play blitzed. You tap, you, you discard something, you make a copy of Radadrabic. That copy comes in as a legendary copy that would normally die at end of turn. It dies immediately and makes a non legendary 2 2 version because of Radadrabic's ability. Uh, because of Legend Rule. So then you have two Radadrabics and a Blitz Jaxus that's going to die at end of turn. When the Jaxus dies at end of turn, because it's legendary, it triggers both the normal Radadrabic and the non-legendary copy of Radadrabic. And it makes two Jaxuses. So now you have two Radadrabics and two Jaxuses in play. And then you can just combo off like crazy. Um, and then the dragons, which are going to be good anyway, because if they die, they can get back a combo piece or search for a combo piece are now even better once your combo's in play, because every time they're dying and making non-legendary copies of themselves with all of the Radadrabics that are getting triggered, you're getting the dies abilities to search for things, put counters on things, bring back non-dragon creatures or make them discard. So there's... Stupid value in these cards right here. And the reason I didn't go this direction originally when I was trying to brew something like this was because I was worried it was too meme and that by the time you got like any of this stuff in play, your Radadrabic would just be dead and it would be too hard to actually consistently pull off. 
But what I realized was all of these cards help you protect the Radadrabic or find a new one or get it back or whatever. So it makes it makes the combo way less cute and way more consistent and doable. So then we just fill in with good cards. And the Geralf helps, uh, gives you a sack outlet for when you want to sack things to trigger Radadrabic or your dragon death triggers. Um, but it also gives you zombies that get the flying and the vigilance. And it also gives all of your zombie tokens that you make with Radadrabic vigilance, which is, or, uh, flying, which is really nice. And then the other legendary zombie is Ludovic that turns into Olag. And when it does, it immediately gets all the zombie buffs. So, deck's pretty cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it one more game here, and we're gonna do a draft. Uh, if you guys weren't aware, let me go check it out real quick. In the daily deals section, there is a draft token available. It's only six thousand seven hundred and fifty coins, or. 850 gems. So jump on that. I grabbed one. And we're going to do that in just a bit. We're going to try this deck one last time. Before we move on. And if anybody's interested in seeing. That deck for realsy. It will most likely end up being the next deck tech on the YouTube. In a better. More final version. Once I take a couple di days to uh, iron out the kinks. Alright, we'll keep this. Sanctum on... I lied. We'll ref Beans Tower on one. Run out of Jadar on two. Thalia. Well then. Jadar is out. Do we write of Oblivion the Thalia or the Brutal Cathar? That's the question. Whether it is nobler. We're gonna run out of Jax this next turn, right? Two, three. Let's eat this. Eat this and keep our board presence. Thalia doesn't really hurt us very much. Rite of Oblivion is the only non-creature card in the entire deck. We run our own Thalias for that very reason. Runs out Nataline. Control blocks. Take the damage. Another Plaza of Heroes, eh? Guess we'll run it out. Jaxus. Might as well smash. It's not gonna work. Maybe we should have attacked before playing Jaxus. He might have been hesitant. If we had. Finn, do you have mod status on YouTube as well? Is that a thing? Okay, well, I guess we do this. And, uh, this. Alright, let me check that out really quick. Actually, I'll, I'll do that after this game.
No attacks. We'll save the zombie as sack fodder for Rite of Oblivion eventually. Okie doke. It's a Hamlet Vanguard. That is a very big Hamlet Vanguard. I mean, yeah, we do this. Goodbye, Adeline. Oh, I guess we get rid of Drabic. Doing all the things. Let me think. Make a copy of Radadravic. And then we blitz. Make another copy of Radadravic. Make a bunch of Jaxuses. And we wait until next turn to Junji. I think that's right. Discard caves. Actually, we'll end up having to discard Junji, right? Yeah. Oh no, because we draw a card. Ha ha! Alright, both Radadrabics trigger. We get more Jaxuses. We'll make another Radadrabic. We'll discard you. Keep you. You go on a stack, you get you. Uh, if I swing with this Radadrabic, I'll get three more Radadrabics. But I will lose the ability to continue to make them, I believe. Yeah, because I won't be making legendary versions, which means it won't be triggering all the copies anymore. So I don't think that's correct. We'll just do it this way. It's fine. We'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Here's my whistle. We aren't clowning around or anything. Absolutely no clowning around allowed on stream. Does he know what to do? I don't think he knows what to do. Junji can get back Jaxus or steal Adeline. That seems pretty good. human <sighs> oh my god I mean Geralt is just too sick though right <laughs> it gives them all flying Flying and Vigilance, and, uh, Rafine. And, uh, all attack, I guess? Target an attacking creature. You. Alright. There's so many different ways we could go. It actually kind of makes the decision making hard. Like, we could no longer make red because we don't have an original Jaxus on the board, which means Plaza of Heroes no longer makes red, which I kind of overlooked. So we can no longer make red, which means none of these Jaxuses can make copies anymore. 
But I mean, we have four Radadrabix, right? So that's fine. So we just have to kind of be careful about how we line things up. We needed to probably sack our Junji to get back the original Jaxus so that our pl uh, Plaza of Heroes could start making red again so that all of those Jaxuses could start making copies and we could get an insane amount of Radadrabix. Just an absolutely insane amount. Yeah, it is no but cringing around Kappa. What do you mean cringing around Kappa? Let's make sure we get you some some mod mod status here. Put user in timeout. No, add moderator. Is there anybody else that was a mod over on uh, Twitch that's on the stream right now? I don't think so. I think it's just what orange. Was DJ a mod? I can't remember. Eh, not a big deal. Let's move on. We're gonna do... We're gonna, we're gonna put this on hold. I gave you a little tasty. I gave you a little tasty of what this deck can do. It can do even crazier things once we get our dragons into play. And we're getting like 10 death triggers off the dragons. But... That's a little tasty. Let's um let's use that uh draft token. Premier draft Dominara United Alchemy. Let's do some drafty draft. Grow our collection. Make sure we get to a hundred percent of Dominari United before Brothers War comes out. And man, Brothers War is looking kind of insane huh I am so excited for that set I'm fully aware that I might be cringing about it within a week or two of it coming out if it's too powerful and you're going up against ridiculous things you know knock on wood but hopefully it's not actually the next Eldraine I'd like something in between you know I like Dominaria a lot. Uh, the, the only thing that's really pissed me off about how they handled Dominaria is that they've saved very important characters for the alchemy set, like Daragaz. That kind of pissed me off. I, I'm mad that Daragaz was wasted in a non-standard set, but other than that, hey, Arvad, Izzy was talking about this earlier, Death Touch, Lifelink, 1-1, one, one. beginning of your end step, if a creature died... He gets plus X plus X perpetually, where X is the number of creatures that died. So he just keeps growing and creeps, keeps growing and keeps growing. I think we just gotta grab him, right? For Izzy's sake. Izzy literally brought up the card earlier and said she liked it, so. Although that Stronghold Arena looks mighty tempting, too. But Arvad's just too good. It's just too good. Let's see. We could go... Esper. We could go... Mardu. Spell Chain Scatter is going to take us four color. Uh, and you have to build around it very specifically. Or we can go Abzan. You want creatures to die. That's the only thing we know for sure. What do you guys think? It counts their creatures dying too. That's something to keep in mind. So we want we want removal that kills their creatures.
We're gonna try Erg, I think. Let's see what we find here. Missionary seems really good, especially for this kind of deck. Yeah, that's an easy pick. I don't know if we actually go green for Erg, but we'll see. Uh, Arvad and Baird just go together like peanut butter and jelly, right? As soon as one thing dies and Arvad is bigger, Baird starts making tokens every turn, which whenever they die, they make Arvad bigger. So, I think we're Mardu. DJ would be proud. What we got here? Artillery Blast, Monstrous War Leech. Tattered Apparition, Toxic Abomination. Are we just like a, a fast deck? Do we just play like Toxic Abomination? Or maybe we grab Steel Crusher. I don't know. Maybe Artillery Blast? I think it's Steel Crusher or Artillery Blast. Tempted to say Steel Crusher because you can sack it to kill an artifact and get extra value off our VOD. But... Artillery Blast is fine. Heirloom. If it's legendary, it has Trample and Haste. Well, we've got some legendaries right now. Trample, Haste, Arvad seems kinda wild. And there isn't anything else super good in this. So I'm gonna grab it. I don't know if we run it, but I'm gonna grab it. We got a Maria. Warhorse seems good. Go wide for Arvad. Yeah. We'll do that. It's looking pretty interesting so far. Trey. Abaft. Skyfly. CJ85, Herbie Wingus, 24 Cold Beer, and Trizzle. Let's see. Love Song of Night and Day gives us a token that can die and trigger Arvad, so maybe. Automatic Librarian's not the worst. Crystal Grotto. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I think it's fine. Another Artillery Blast or a Shielder's Restoration. That might be worth it. Arvod gets perpetually bigger, so even when it dies, we bring it back. Which is why Missionary is great. Came back. I think we grab Battlefly Swarm here. Nice little tradey trade. Grab the War Horse. So red is definitely the splash, if anything. I mean, it's it's possible, Erg. It's possible we could still go green instead of red. Hell, it's possible we just go Orzhov if our cards are good enough. Like everything so far is working really well. Missionary with Arvad is, like, super powerful. Because it dies, trades with something, whatever. Use Missionary to get it back, and it, it has the perpetual plus X plus X. Grab the Steel Crusher, and maybe a Hammer Hand. Maybe. Oracle of the Alpha, Conjure the Power 9. <laughs> uh, I want it, but these cards work so well for our deck. I mean, do we just splash into blue? We gotta take it, right? We can't not take it. Hopefully one of these will come back, but I doubt it. We can't not take Oracle of the Alpha with the fucking Power 9. Give me a break. Who 
who's the hold up? Trizzle? CJ? A haughty gin? Really? A haughty gin? Gotta take the other Sanger Connoisseur. Griffin Protector's pretty good. The land would be decent. But yeah, we're gonna take the Connoisseur. It's just too good for the deck. Garna, Blood Fist of Killed. That seems really good for this deck, but we need fixing like... Like yesterday. Maybe we just grab the Sky Knight because of that? Yeah. Garna might just come back. We don't know if we have the fixing yet. We just don't have any of the Mardu fixing at all. Dies, it deals damage equal to its power. Extinguish the light. I don't know if we can go into red or blue yet. So I'm going to take Extinguish. I'm not going to get greedy. I think if we knew for sure we had the fixing we needed, we'd take the Berserker. But I think it's a little too risky. Urza assembles, destroy evil. Hey, a Geothermal Bog. Although at this point... I almost feel like it doesn't make sense to go red. We're going to give up what? Extinguish the light? Or destroy evil? So that we can put in Baird and Steel Crusher? Nah. We'll grab destroy evil. And Aaron. Yeah, I think... I think we just turned into Orzov. I think we just turned into Orzov, which is fine. It's still possible to add red, but I doubt it. We have no fixing at all. We need some black-white fixing. Stat. Stat. Haunted Mire. Vivisector. Vivisector is actually pretty good. Just give me, like, one dual land, and I'm happy. Just one. This deck is looking insane. Arvad, Aaron, Vivisector, Missionary, Sky Knight, two war horses, Sanger Connoisseur, another war horse. I'm not 100% sure if we play all these war horses, but they help us go wide. It's kind of what we want. Can't believe these cards are still here. We're going to take away that combat research for sure. As long as it's legendary. How many legendaries do we actually have now? Arvad. Aaron. That's really it. Alright. We're pretty deep into black-white here. <laughs> Leyline Binding. Is that an automatic snab snag? I think so. Even as a four mana spell, it's still great. I would like the cult's con conscript, but uh, not not overlay line binding. 
Morale Sergeant is super dumb good. But we're out of red. So I don't think we can grab another war horse. We could grab some stuff for domain though. Yeah, let's just do that. One more two drop would be nice too. Sky Knight, Citizen's Arrest, Sunlit Marsh. I already have one Sky Knight, right? Yeah. How much removal do we have? Destroy Evil, Artillery Blast. Extinguish the Light. Leyline Binding, that's four. Eh, we'll grab the Arrest. It's not like our land is in like a bad, bad spot. Bone Splinters might be okay. Battlefly Swarm's probably better though. Strider, Linebreaker Ballast, Toxic Abomination. Dillick, Beachfront. I don't think any of these are great. Although we don't have many three drops, so maybe the automatic librarian is necessary. Take it, just in case. I'm gonna take the sleeper here. Cleaving Skyrider. Seems pretty good. If we had any red whatsoever, that would be nice. Maybe we just grab the Vivisector instead. Do need two drops, so. Bone Splinters isn't awful. Don't think we run it, but I'll grab it. Herbalist. Deck's looking pretty good. It's a little weird when it comes to the fixing, but it's two colors, so I think it'll be fine. Uh, grab another aquifer. Blue splash is not out of the question. I'd want like two more lands to make it happen but it's not out of the question. Let's see, sleeper. Oh, there's the deck, for what it's worth. What are the chances we can splash the oracle. That's what we gotta ask ourselves. Three blue, eight black, eight white. What else do we have for fixing anything? We have some scry stuff, some draw stuff. That kinda helps. But not really. We do have the salvaged mana worker. But I don't think that makes the cut. So three blue lands. For one oracle of the alpha.
Let's see, what do we cut here? Might cut you. We'll cut you. Uh, I think we cut the apparitions. Restoration can get back what? Necromass, Oracle, Connoisseur, Sky Knight, Aaron, or Vod. All that seems pretty good. I think I think we actually keep it specifically because our VODs plus X plus X triggers while he's in the graveyard. So getting him back seems really good, which is why Missionary is good. But I think it might also be worth a Shielder's Restoration. So really it comes down to, can we splash for Oracle? Does that make sense? Six pieces of spot removal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do we get rid of the librarian, maybe? One of the war horses, maybe? There are an awful lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen actual creature cards for writhing necromass. So I think it's probably keepable. I think this is right. So, we gotta cut one of these. Just one of these. What do you guys think we should cut? I know you'd probably say Love Song of Night and Day. But I don't know, for some reason I feel like it would work really well in this deck. And I kinda wanna try it. I think it's the automatic librarian. The war horse, even though it's expensive, is kind of, uh, it helps us go wide for Arvad, for Aaron, for Vivisector. Like everything in the deck kind of wants us to go wide for Connoisseur. So, yeah, I do think either the librarian or a war horse i think i'm gonna go with cutting the librarian for now actually we kind of need our three drops right and the scry the scry is pretty good let's cut one war horse even though i like them i don't think we need three of them right Two is probably fine. I think you're definitely right, dude, that it's it's one of those cards. I think it's the War Horse. Alright. Power Schmauer. How 
Power Schmauer nine. How about power power none? Because we're never gonna be able to cast it <laughs> as with three blue sources. It's fine. It's fine, guys. I don't know what you're worried about. It's fine. You're worried for nothing. Let's get in there and make it happen. Right, Bandit? You making it happen, Bandy boy? I am going to need more coffee. That is for damn sure. No white, but we do have our Arvad, and we can scry into our white, I think. So we're going to keep this. It's actually a pretty good hand. We play out the Vivisector on two. We get at least scry two. If our Vivisector dies, we get to scry another one. If our Audic Automatic Librarian dies first while the Vivisect is out. That's another scry. So that's... We should definitely find some white sources. Bottom. Bottom. Well... That could help, right? Since we have our blue source, I'm going to keep it. Might be wrong because we really need our white. But fuck it. Power none, baby. You're looking at the none in best of one. Let's get it done. Vivisector. This coming Saturday is a big card show at your shop. Swing by if you have time. Bunch of vendors. It's from 10 to 2 at the Hooksit location. Alrighty, alrighty. So for anybody that might be watching this later, by the way, I'm just going to reiterate, this 500 subscriber stream is kind of just a test run. Um, for our eventual, eventual 1,000 subscriber test stream. Or, not test stream. Our eventual 1,000 subscriber celebration stream. Um, I haven't subscribed, or I haven't... I'm tired, leave me alone. <laughs> I haven't streamed on YouTube yet. This is my first actual YouTube live stream. I do all my live streaming on Twitch, typically. And then, uh, I upload all of my long-form content over here on YouTube. So, let's see what we can do here. Swing. Scry one. Bottom that for white. If he has a trick and he kills a dude, we get to scry again. So, not the end of the world. Scrutiny. Alright, we'll just play Battlefly Swarm. I think we might just get there without ever having a white source. Maybe? From what I've gathered about YouTube and the way you stream on it, it's really pretty much no different than Twitch. Other than the back end. But as far as when you're streaming, and how you interact with the community and all of those things, it's been very similar. Uh, you're gonna put it on the bottom now? Okay. Oh, you're gonna... You want me to have more Power 9? 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be the only deck in the history of Magic to have two Black Lotuses in the deck. Hey, a Mox Pearl. We got our white. <laughs> we got our white. Because we drew a Mox, of all things. Do we play Aravad? Or do we just play Oracle of the Alpha again? I'm just gonna play Oracle of the Alpha again. Leave up a black for Battlefly Swarm. Alright. Pass turn. We now have two Black Lotuses, two Time Walks, two Time Twisters, and two Ancestral Recalls in this deck. Let's go. Okay. Turn the Battlefly Swarm. That's fine. Can't swing with the terror, we can crack back. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? You goon. We're just gonna block with the vivisector and scry one. So both our other guys can swing at him pretty easily. Mox Emerald? No, we don't want that. Put that on the bottom. Mox Ruby, okay. Do some uh, Arvadian. We'll do some Battlefly Swarming. And we'll swing with all the boys and scry one. Time Twister? Yeah, I'll keep that on top. That's fine. I'm okay with that. We trade our Battlefly Swarm for their terror and Arvad becomes a 3-3. I like that. I like that. Play the Jin. We can't play any of these white cards anyway, right? So, I guess we could play the Artillery Blast, but it only does damage to a tapped creature. <laughs> I'd basically be drawing three cards and he'd be drawing two cards. Swarm, we gotta save it for blocks. No attacks. We're gonna hold up Leyline Binding, I think. Yeah. We're gonna hold up Leyline Binding for that gin. Derogaz is well, sure. So he's gonna find a dragon. Nail. Avazoa arrow knot. Sure. Damn it, that's a lot of flyers. Well, sir, I don't like it. At least he's out of tricks. So we'll get rid of the gin while we can. Play another planes here. Seven mana. Seven mana. 
Let me start with you. Swing. Swing. Bottom the Mox Emerald. He's gonna trade here. I am fine with that. Get lots of triggers. Be happy. Uh, we're gonna save the sleeper, I think. Yeah, end the turn. Arvad gets big. Arvad gets big. As does the connoisseur. Daragaz. Pretty good. We need removal. Or we need to win super fast. He's got so many flyers. Mox Jet. Island. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Don't want to get my guys bigger. That way, maybe. Let's just do it. He'll eat it up, but my guys will get bigger. It, it's whatever. At this point, I have to race him because of Daragaz. Uh, three turns from now, he's just gonna start overwhelming me with value. So I just gotta get these guys big enough to survive combat with just one creature, so that he has to two for one, and once I'm at that point, I can just go for it. Makes me discard my sleeper. That's fine. Does stuff. We're gonna just run him out of cards. We still have 39 because we put so many cards into our deck. Is that like a secret alternate win condition for Oracle of the Alpha decks? Find ways to keep playing it, keep filling up your deck with the power 9 while you mill out your opponent because your deck keeps getting bigger? 18 you mean? 16 now. 39. Does Cardboard Live still work on YouTube? Probably not, right? Never even thought about that. Yeah, that's just a Twitch thing, right? No extensions. Got you. Alright. He's egging. He's egging real fucking hard, guys. We draw in. We draw in cards. Run him out of cards. That's the secret.
these sacks here. So, he has to trade for his Daragaz or chump walk it. I think that's fine. Does have two mana though. I don't think he's willing to trade his Daragaz. He's got a trick, I guess. No trick. Just gonna chump it. I think he's just gonna chump it. Which is fine because next turn we go wide with Aaron. Good old Aaron. Hello. We're gonna give him the shrug. For some reason he's he's impulsing in the middle of combat with no mana left over. Just cuz, I guess. Alright, Arvad gets bigger. Wait a minute. Why did he get so much bigger. Did three creatures die? Oh, because I sacked a creature and made him sack a creature. Right. It's perpetual. It's perpetual. What does he kill? Aaron, I guess. Probably. He better hurry up and kill Aaron. This is his one chance to do it. His one chance. All right, this boy's getting the whistle. So what's the difference on YouTube? Let's see, we don't have our emotes. I don't think we have uh we don't have any of our sound clips, which is sad. Make a 1-1. One, one. Make a 1-1. One, one. Look at all these moxes. Who would have thought? Who woulda thought? So first things first, I'm gonna play this boy. We can make the war horse super big if we want. Try it this way. See how he blocks the warhorse. He has to block it with something. He's just gonna chump the connoisseur. Wait. He's gonna take it? Instant speed removal, maybe? Do we just win? I mean, he could just be baiting us into sacking our stuff. 
I'm well aware of that, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it to try. Did he kick it? So, four? That creature gets an additional minus one, minus one. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's going to be minus six, minus six. That's fine. Just sack everything. Might have been a mistake. For some reason, I thought that I wouldn't have to sack Arvod. But, oh well, we're too deep now. Gotta do it. Oh. Something happened. How did we get. I'm so confused. How did we get an extra plus one plus one at the end there? How did that how the original Oh right. It survived. Okay. See, I knew I was doing the math, right? I just... Spaced it? I guess? I am a dummy. This is true. This is true. Power none. Going all the way. Lots of planes. I don't know, can we keep it? We only need one swamp and we're on the draw. I'm gonna try. Hey, there it is. So, vivisector on two. Battlefly swarm hold up artillery blast on three. Three to something. Nope. Much better to do this. Swing two. Get in for two. Play the librarian. We'll scry. Joint exploration. Sure. Can I sub to my own channel? Is that a thing I can do? Ah, uh, do we want the extra black? We might need it, right, for Battlefly Swarm? Let's do that. I'm not going to get greedy. We'll 
black, blue, red, green, no white. Looks like he's mostly is it. Splashing green and black? Possibly? Fires of Victory, Librarian, which lets us scry one. Well, now I'm going to bottom it. So we have one less, one less thing on the field. Uh, we need more value, I feel. Maybe that's just me being weird. How's the stream, anyway? Is there anything about the stream you feel like I need to do better or I should do different? Like I had said before, uh, I don't really know... We'll bottom that. I don't really know uh, what's typical for a YouTube stream. I know super chats are a thing sometimes. I don't really know how those work. it. Stop licking your foot. I'm gonna come over there and I'm gonna hug you. Don't make me do it. Everything looks okay. I am missing the emotes and the channel point redemptions and all that stuff. So I think my gut instinct tells me I should probably still stick to doing as much of my streaming on Twitch as possible. I think... I think I'm gonna reserve YouTube. I, I still want to live stream on YouTube sometimes. I don't want to not use it at all. But I think I'm gonna save it for shorter streams where it's not... where it's more conversational and I'm not really playing games. Um, because not having Cardboard Live, not having the emotes or the channel point redemptions or any of that, just makes it a little weird. So, I think anytime I'm playing, I'm going to still go to Twitch. And, uh, it's possible that my typical Sunday streams that I want to start doing, the just two hour long ones are probably going to be more conversational more talking about like what's new this week that kind of stuff and just chatting and maybe those will just be on on youtube eventually not yet because i still want to feel out what i should do on youtube or if i should do anything on youtube but like i'm starting to think like eventually what it might turn into and i kind of feel like eventually that's what it'll be so we're gonna citizens arrest this boy and get in three. Play a battlefly swarm. Now we can shoulder restoration to get back a sky knight if we want. Seems halfway decent at least. Could also get back the librarian just to scry into things. Larian Geyser, sure. Just running out of gas. So we're one mana away from a kicked restoration at this point. So I'm just gonna do this. If he wants to kill something, do it now before I get a scry. We will swing. I mean, maybe we just play the restoration. Holding up the artillery blast doesn't do anything for us because it can only target something tapped. 
And we're way ahead on life. I'm just gonna do it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I don't know. Magic is cool. Duvian Atrocity not kicked. Nothing in the yard to kick. Unfortunately. Love song of night and day. No, we're not drawing cards, you buffoon. Do you think I'm crazy? And what's that boy? Does he have removal for the Sky Knight? Get in for five? All right. Removal? Nope. Presenting lethal. End the turn. And we've got plus one, plus one counters as well. So even if he kills the Sky Knight, we could put a plus one, plus one counter on the Swarm and on the 1-1 one, one Flying Bird. And then that's just it. Sure. Good game. Good game, Jack. Yeah, we got you. Boy, howdy. So if we finish this draft before 7 p.m., I'm going to be taking on challenges from anyone that's in chat for the rest of the stream up until 7 So if anyone wants to challenge me, keep it in mind, it's coming, right bandit? Right bug boy? Hey, we have all of our colors. Let's go. This deck's pretty good. I actually think that that Power 9 card is pretty well balanced, the more I think about it. Because by the time you play it on 3, the earliest you can draw a Mox is turn 4. And by turn 4, you don't really want to be drawing moxes, right? Moxes are great because while you're curving out, you curve out quicker for free. So... I don't know. At, at that point, I feel like you don't... you don't want to be drawing moxes. It's almost like a dead draw. It's almost like you're adding lands into your deck and thinning out your ability to draw business spells. And I think that kind of balances it out a bit. Maybe not 100%, but a bit. I mean, we'll just offer the trade. And then we'll play a guy. Uh, yes, we want Arvad. But we 
We want that swamp pond for sure. We need more white sources. Here's the plan. Alright, I guess we'll do it this way. Swing. And if they die, Arvad becomes a 3 3. We cannot block the Rulik Mons, but I don't really care. I don't want to block the Rulik Mons. What would you like to play, good sir? So what I want to do is Love Song of Night and Day, draw cards. Find a planes, play Artillery Blast, kill the Lucamons. That's my plan. Let's see if it works. Hey, there we go. First we'll do this before he knows we can kill Rulik Mons. Because that might change things. So four damage to the Rulik. Get plus one plus one. So now we can block the one one and gain life, which means he can only swing with the flyer. All right, all right. I'm with it. I'm hip. I'm with it. just have to offer the trade with Tatiova? I think so. I think we need to start gaining life. Tatiova's gonna just run us over. Alright. Let's block some stuff and get some counters on Arvad. Interesting. Maybe I should have sacked it in response. Oh boy. Pretty rough. Plus one, plus one counter on a card. And a plus one, plus one counter on another card. Needs life. So let's do it that way. Play you. Play you. Play you. a bunch. All the forest lose flying. Uh, a flyer it seems pretty good. And the turn. So I think the vivisectors double block one of the forests. We might just destroy evil that combat research. See what he attacks with. Yes, get out of here. He's looking for removal. We're not giving it to him. 
Sojourner. Sojourner! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Five, four. We attack with everything. He lets a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2 two, two through. And goes to 1. See what he does. Scry two. Battle fly swarm. Sure. survives. He goes to one. We do more scrying. We play Oracle of the Alpha. <sighs> and the turn. Arvad's a big boy. He's a 10-10. Can we get him out of the yard? Man, he seems wildly good, huh? Imagine if we were playing a deck with, um... What's the name of that card? That's not in standard anymore. Three mana black sorcery. Gets back creatures with total mana cost. Up to two creatures with total mana cost. Three. Put a death touch counter on one of them and a menace counter on the other. That card. And uh, the white version that, that's patch up with Arvad just seems kind of crazy. Well, we're 3 0. Let's keep it go. Keep it go, go. video proof that I don't always drink coffee only 95% of the time this looks good we'll keep it I really don't want to have to play that missionary on two if I can help it though I mean I will we have other four drops hey there we go that's just better Goblin Morale Sergeant. We'll trade. Because it gets big even when it's in the yard. Pass turn. I'm not going to skip the kicker. When Arvad's in the yard. When all we have to do is just wait one turn. Just one. Seems pretty good. Gomos, sure. Uh, so we gain two life. Okay, and waste your shore up. Sounds good to me. You crazy buffoon. Let's play all the beef all the beef ever look at all the beef soul canar
kills Aaron. Fine. That's fine. I'll probably destroy evil it. Could citizens arrest it? Just do both. Get out of here. Swing one, gain a life. Arvad gets pumped. Necromass. get back something with shield restoration, but I feel like this is the better. I also feel like I don't have a problem trading with his necromass if that's what he wants. Cool. You're helping me. I'll just let it through. No blocks. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Just gonna do this. Okay. triggers becomes a 3-3 and he scoops it up seems pretty good to me guys I don't know if you know this but Arvad Arvad's pretty good he's pretty good and I like him we're up to four wins one more and we get all of our currency back every single currency All of the currency. So what's everybody up to today? How's your uh, how's your weekend been, go been going? Hey, look, Arvad. Turn two, Arvad. Turn three, Oracle. Four ley line binding. Seems pretty okay. start with the aquifer it's cool we've got missionary again so Arvad dies early like before no sweat we just trade with the brawler not feel bad about it Although, maybe we don't need to yet. Maybe we can just crack back and gain a little extra life before we trade with Darvad. Some damage. 
Play the Oracle. Power 9 is a go. More like Power None. Okay, Broken Wings is it. We still get the Power 9 though, and we get to trigger Arvod? Seems like a mistake. I mean, him being in play is not what you should be worried about. So, do we just play the Vivisector, or do we hold up Leyline Binding? I think we'll just hold up Leyline Binding. So why not? Elder Dragon War. Chapter one. We're going to hit that. No big flying dragons for you. Also got a time twister, which is kind of pretty good. We just need a land. How greedy do we want to be? I guess we just do this and offer to trade damage back and forth for now. We can't time twister until we play out our hand because he gets way more from it than we do. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna do this. Because we should be able to double block pretty effectively. No tax. Gain two life and kill the sentry. And scry one. Unless he's got a trick. But I mean, even if we just get rid of a trick, scry two and gain two life, that's pretty good. I will absolutely take it. We need the mana badly, so I'm gonna keep that. This boy, no attacks. Just slowly play out our hand, and eventually time twister when we're sure we're not giving him card advantage. Fire Nato's the connoisseur, it's fine. Takes up his whole, t his whole turn, and we get to scry one. Hey, a Mox Pearl. Let's keep it. Let's keep it so we can play out all our things. Fly Swarm Time Twister? No blocks. We'll take the two. That's pretty good. Vigilance, Trample. He'll draw five, we'll draw seven. That seems pretty good to me. Black Lotus, no big deal. It's just Black Lotus. It's just Black Lotus. No biggie.
exile the brawler. Use the black lotus. Kick it. Sack it. Doing it this way instead of bone splinters so that we can attack with more creatures. It's going to sack itself. Scry one. Shoulders restoration looks good. List the vivisector. Because why not? In reality, I should have just attacked separately with three attackers, just in case he had like some kind of a shock or something. But it's all good. He has a huge hand now, so we just have to like end the game quick. Real, real quick. Black Lotus in our yard. Tree Folk. Trying really hard. It's got no reach. Zero reach. We could sack something that we get back. Right? To bone splinters. Target you. Sack you. Bottom of the land. Next to combat. Just swing all. Does he have a trick? not have a trick. End the turn. Alright. We are presenting lethal. What can you do with that full grip of cards? Timely interference. Minus one. Just needs to draw a card, I guess. Just needs to draw a card. Alright. Well, smash you. I have to admit, as much as I hate to admit it, these alchemy drafts are awesome. I love everything about them. They cost the same as normal drafts. They still have standard rares in them. They just also have an alchemy card in each pack. So you're not wasting your money doing these drafts instead of normal. Normal uh, standard drafts. Standard set draft. But they add a little spice to the game. And also give you a way to maybe build your alchemy collection so that if you do decide to do some kind of, sorry, alchemy constructed, you don't have to spend any resources. I think these drafts are the one, the, the one and only good thing about alchemy that I actually appreciate. You might not ever hear me admit that again. We'll see. Uh, I guess this is okay. Do we just play the sleeper on two? I think so. I think we just get it out there. Alright. Goblin. 
picker. Don't have a three drop. So I'm okay with just doing this. No attacks. The warhorse is going to be a three three. And easily be able to just eat the picker. So we don't want to trade with the sleeper. If we can help it. A ley line binding. You're going to pass the turn, hold up the ley line binding, kick a uh, war horse next turn. Because we're kind of flooding a bit, we need to get as much value out of each of our cards as possible. So I don't want to just slam the war horse now, even though it could eat the picker. I want to wait. don't really care about the Phoenix Chick, honestly. It could Leyline Binding it, so it can't ever come back with its other ability. But I'm fine. I'm fine with just doing this. something you definitely want going. We gotta do it now, right? Should we... Restoration, just to get something out there right now? Probably, yeah. Let's just do it. No tax. We need to go as wide as possible before Aaron comes online. So I think it just makes sense to do it do it that way. Hello. Love song of night and day. the goblin picker pretty easily. Do you want a leyline binding the love song of night and day so he doesn't get plus one plus one counters? Uh, I think we'll just leyline binding one of the creatures that he targets with the plus one plus one counters. I think that's better. It's a race. Now it is certainly a race. God damn it. It's coming in for three. Alright, so we'll play... The automatic librarian. We'll get some scrying in. Try to make sure we hit gas next turn. Uh, yeah, I guess that that works. Then we will wait. Cancel. We can do that at instant speed, right?
So we're just gonna do it like this. See what he does for blocks. No blocks, huh? Alright, I'll hit for eight, put him at nine. And let's see what he does. We can go straight to making a bird and then sack the bird to buff up our team and swing in with the whole team. Which means if any two of our three connect, we'll kill him. We sacrifice him in response. Does that matter? I don't think so. Swings in for six. Which means if he blocks the war horse. We definitely lose. Does he have removal? No, he would have used it. I'm taking a gamble. Put it on the guys that can't pump. And then swing all. If he does have removal, that's it, but... I'm thinking if he did, he would have used it, just like he did. He used the destroy evil to kill Aaron. I don't, I don't know why. Fuck. Okay. Well, that's it, unfortunately. Good game. Maybe I should have just drew cards with this. I mean, I know it was taking a gamble putting the plus two, plus two, uh, the, the two plus one, plus one counters on. But, like, I felt like I had to really make a hard decision there. Where if I drew the cards, it didn't draw anything that could affect the board in a significant way. It was going to be a waste. Whereas, if he had removal, I felt like he would have used it. So I felt like it was safer to just try and go in this way. Because he had to block... Pretty much all of them, right? definitely had to block the horse or it could present lethal on its own and then he had to block another one in order to take five and be at one or and be at four so he had to be able to block two creatures and I really thought that he was out of tricks because I figured he would have used them already like he did on Aaron. I definitely wasn't 100% convinced of that, but I felt like there was a better chance that that line worked out than me drawing random cards and letting him draw. But if we had done it that way, we would have had, what, four mana left. We would have drew two cards what was what was still uh what was still in the deck it's not showing my deck tracker for some reason what was still in the deck that would have saved us 
restoration, air and love song, destroy evil is all we used. And Leyland Binding. We only used eight cards that whole game. Wow. So I guess... Let's see, what, what could we have drawn that we could have used four mana to deal with a bunch of flyers? Battlefly swarms would have been good. Artillery blast would have been good. Sleeper was already on the field. Citizen's arrest, I think was already on, did we already citizen's arrest? I can't recall, but maybe. Sky Knight would have at least given us an extra turn. Extinguish the Light would have saved us. Connoisseur would have saved us. So there were a decent amount of cards we could have drawn to save us. One, two, three. Four. Kind of five, actually. Six. Seven, eight. And actually, even the bone splinters. Nine. Alright, five and one. It's fine, it's fine. Well, Love Song of Night and Day could draw us into our black mana for everything else. If we get only one black mana, we can at least play Aaron. I think this could work. Or it could really screw us up. Actually, we need a white and a black for Aaron. So because of that, I don't think we can keep it. two lands away from this, this, and this. And this won't be able to kill anything on their curve at all. This is better. We'll toss back a vivisector, I guess. Hope to scry into a an extinguish the light. We're gonna lead with the vivisector. Because next turn I want to play our VOD and swing with the Vivisector, and if he trades, be able to pump up our VOD. That's my plan. See if it works. This soda is gross. I enjoy Bark's Root Beer and the occasional Mountain Dew Code Red. But for the most part, I don't drink soda. Swing in two. Offer the trade. He only gets bigger at the end of our turn. So we need to make sure things die on our turn. This, this is a Diet Coke. This is disgusting, but it's all we have other than water or coffee. And I'd have to brew a whole new pot of coffee. I'm down to like 
my last sip or two in this cup. I don't feel like it right now. Because we're hanging on YouTube and we're having a good time. Alright, I'll just keep doing the thing, I guess. Play this, I guess. I could destroy evil with the Weather Seed Treaty. Maybe that's what I should have done. But I think there's way scarier things that I can target with it later. Though we're kind of stuck on mana, so... I don't know. Kicks the Sprouting Goblin. Fetches a black source. I bet. Black blue? Black blue black blue dual land. Or black white dual land. Or black red dual land. Aha! I was right. Wait. Yeah. I was right. Scry into some land. Yeah, we'll keep it. I kinda hate it, but... Gotta do what we gotta do. Pass turn. We're gonna let him target a creature, and then we're gonna kill that creature with destroy evil. That's the plan. Or do we just take the five? It's just the one one. It's just the one one. Do we even care? I don't think we even care. I'm just gonna do this. Yes, we'll keep that. Plays a Maro. Well, that was lucky for us, wasn't it? We'll kill the Maro. Play you. Play you. Scry two. Get rid of you. We'll keep you. Because we need land. No attack. End turn. We can eat the 1-1, one, one, trade with the 2-2, two, two, if we really want to. Eh, we'll just let it through. We'll just let it through, because these are going to get bigger with Love Song of Night and Day. Eventually, at least. Home speaker. Loam Speaker. Speaker of the Loam. Do we extinguish the light? I think we gotta kill Rada, right? Actually, there's some really cool stuff we could do at instant speed, I think. We're going to pass. We can block Rada if he swings with it. With the Librarian, kill the Rada, trade with it. Extinguish the light, the thing he targets with the Rada, with Domain. Kill that. And then also gain life, since that thing will be three or less mana. Better to gain the life and kill the Rada than not gain the life and kill the Rada. So that's that's my plan. Let's see if it pans out. Another sprouting goblin. What's going on with all these sprouting goblins? Absolute insanity. 
How do you get three sprouting goblins in one draft? Somebody explain to me. It's crazy. Alright, so he's definitely out of dual lands if he got a red-green one. Because you'd think he'd want blue or white, especially white since he white's important enough for him to put it in as a basic. Sure. Sure. Keep the battle fly swarm, or do we stem the bleeding? I don't love it, but if we kill the land, it doesn't really stop the attacker. earlier. <laughs> Not right now. Not right now, homies. Aether Channeler. But we're gonna lose. At least chapter 3 wasn't about to trigger. Well, it does mean he's got lethal next turn unless we top deck something decent. More than decent. Okay, well. We did have a chance. Fortunately, we do not anymore. Oh. He's not... Okay. So we have a chance. He must have a pump spell, right? And that's how he's gonna kill us? I mean, either way, blocking the forest, I don't think it's worth it. Oh, he's just gonna he's gonna draw cards. Wow. Alright, we're not a hundred percent out of this. Submit zero. What do we have to get back? That's good enough. Anything expensive? A two drop Aravad? Three drop librarian. We're gaining as much life as whatever the casting cost of the thing we bring back. So Arvad hasn't gone up at all. That seems kind of crazy to me. If we get the Arvad, we get one less life, but we'll gain one more life when it dies because lifelink. So I think that's worth it. So we still gain the same amount of life. Except we make sure we kill the thing. That attacks us. Very close. Very close to actually coming back here. 
I don't expect it to happen. But very close. Alright, destroy the forest. Gain a life. Top deck mode again. Second Territorial Morrow. Jesus, this, this dude's deck is absolutely insane. And we're dead. Good game. This guy's deck is the craziest fucking thing I've ever seen. I don't understand how he gets three Sprouting Goblins, two Maros, a Loam Speaker, an Aether Channeler, a Rada, a Weather Seed Treaty, a Bite, like, all in the same deck. It's like all of the top... Like, literally all of the first picks, or the, the high picks, I should say, for a domain deck. It's like all of them. <laughs> like, multiples of all of them. Did his draft pod just, like, nobody else tried to go domain at all, and he just was able to easily get everything? Crazy, man. What a crazy deck. We've still made back all of our gems and then some plus packs, so it's fine. We're five and two. We're five and two. Let's get it. Looks fine. We'll keep this. Hello, run home. It's like turn two vivisector, turn three oracle. We've got a three mana leyline binding. All sorts of yummy stuff. All sorts of yummy stuff. You definitely want oracle on three if you can. Swing first, see what he does. Okay. Or Oracle. Oracle of the Alpha. Urtai Scorn? What? Who plays nothing on two and a counter spell on three in limited? Conjure a random card from Goblin Influx Array Spellbook into your hand. Oh god, it's gonna be one of these games. Well, that means we need to go quick. We just need to fucking bum rush him. Rager. missionary back or missionary to get something back I could ley line binding his influx array but honestly I don't think we're going to be able to compete he's already gotten too much value off of it and I think if we don't win the tempo war we just don't win this game there's no way we win the value war it's just not going to happen it's just not going to happen. So we'll run out of Vivisector. 
and then we'll declare attacks and he will probably kill Arvad. Binding the Urtai. We get to scry to. Aaron seems pretty good. Keep it. He goes to five. Arvad gets bigger. So Arvad is now a 3 3 in there. We do have a missionary. Rash Taunter? What the fuck? Since when the hell was Brash Taunter in this draft? Wait, Brash Taunter is in Alchemy 23? Dominaria United Alchemy? I'm so confused. I am so confused. Guys, what what is what is going on? I don't even understand. I don't even know what life is anymore. So we'll take two and trade with the other one. We'll scry. Battlefly Swarm. It is a flyer. short of actually being able to play it. Maybe we should have put away the swarm. I don't know. Two, one, two, and one. I guess we could play like Destroy Evil, Arvad, and the Battlefly Swarm next turn. something. If he blocks the Banal Sleeper and then fights something else, it doesn't do anything. So what he'll do... He'll block the Vivisector, and then he will fight the Sleeper. And we'll take five. He'll take two from the Missionary. And Arvad will get really big. And then we play Battlefly Swarm afterwards. Because otherwise he blocks the Sleeper and then fights the Swarm. Wait, what? You're going to block the Missionary instead? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Right. You go to three. Arvad gets real big. So we could fight the Battlefly Swarm and kill it. Which 
is what I think he does, right? He blocks Arvad. He kills Arvad. That's fine. Bottom of the planes. Getting rid of so many lands. Thank goodness. Got the chieftain. But I don't think he's gonna swing. But it is a 2-2 now, which means it can fight and kill the Vivisector. But he can't fight this turn. So do we force him to have to block with his ringleader, I guess? He either blocks with his ringleader or he just takes two damage. And we have to swing in because he can't fight this turn. Which kind of makes all the difference in the world. He can't stop all the damage unless he double blocks. Okay. That's what I was hoping. We need Chieftain to die. So, Chieftain dies. Which makes everybody else lose their power toughness boost. Which is really, really important. We scry another Battlefly Swarm. I don't think that's what we need. Neither is that. End the turn. Arvad's big boy. It's now an 8-8. Imagine if we could just get him back. Defiler. Jesus Christ. Talk about rares. Haughty Jin. Chieftain. I guess he pulled the Chieftain out of the array, right? Array. Oh, right. That's how he got the Brash Taunter. Okay, now, now it's clicking for me. The array is getting him a bunch of crazy old goblins. Another goblin Chieftain? Oh my god, dude. Absolute insanity. Bone splinters. That doesn't help. Past turn. It's rough, man. Maybe we should have just swung in with the 1-1. One, one. Oh my god, and a coalition construct? Dude, how did this guy get so lucky? Granted, I know the Brash Taunter and the Chieftains came from the Array, but Array, Construct, Defiler, Haughty Jin. Good lord. Just a Defiler. Just a Defiler.
That was actually a mistake. I forgot that when I sack the Battlefly Swarm, I'll no longer have one toughness from the Swarm, preventing Eren from dying. I thought I'd be left with one or the other, depending on how we lined it up. But no dice. Well, we'll at least fizzle out his timely interference. Okay, he's gonna fight it first. Ow. And another land. Well, good run. Oh, he had so many fucking goblins. From that damn array. Maybe I should have just taken out the array with the binding way earlier. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to take out Urtai, which would have been difficult. But man, he had what? Firebrand, Chieftain, Ringleader, Taunter. Another Chieftain. Some Relic Robbers. He just had so much value off that one card. And I knew that, right? I had brought it up earlier in the game, where I had to make a difficult decision. Do I take out the array now? Or do I try to race him? And at the time, I thought trying to race him made sense. But now that I look back, I think I needed to take out the array. Even if it means that Urtai 2 for ones me. Because he just got too much. He got, he got two picks off the array before I could have taken it out with the binding. As far as I recall. Maybe it was only one. So if I think about the way this game went. If he didn't have all but one or two of these two chieftains, two relic robbers, ringleader, firebrand, and brash taunter. Those seven. <sighs> and maybe even the wily goblin. I think we would have been fine. Well, we still did good. We made it to five wins. More gems than what we put into it. Bunch of free packs. I feel good about it. Let's crack them. Let's crack them. Green Widow's nice. Surprised I don't already have a full play set of those. Marwin's Kindred. Four mana X, conjure a card named Marwin, and X cards named Llanowar Elves onto the battlefield. What a busted card, man. Kitu Ember Coiler. This is the one where at the beginning of your main phase you can discard a card and then seek a card with greater mana value and exile it. And until end of turn, you may play the exiled card. And Tefri's Contingency is that crazy counterspell. And then a Mythic Rare. Which is nice. Alright, I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick. And then uh, we're going to finish up the last hour of this stream. If anybody's still on and wants to challenge me to games, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I might just hit the ranked ladder. I'll decide when I get back. I'll see you guys in just a bit.
Guess who's back? Back again. Cap is back. Tell a friend. Cap is back. Cap is back. Cap is back. Drinking this goddamn Diet Coke. Who drinks Diet Coke anyway? Did they specifically engineer diet soda to taste like flat soda? Because to me, it tastes like flat soda. It's not good. But it's better than tap water. And it's better than nothing. Anyway. You still, uh, you still here, Finn? You still with me? What? What? What am I taking back? Diet Coke being awful? I will never take that back. I gotta show you something. I gotta show you guys something. I did a thing. You'd much rather drink tap water than some stupid fucking Diet Coke. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. If I'm like really thirsty, then yeah. If I'm looking to chug something, one thousand percent I'd rather I'd rather have tap water. But if I'm just like kind of thirsty and I want something to sip on, then no. No 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 no. I got something to show you though. You don't like carbonated shit? It's weird because it... It takes a lot of getting used to, I find. Um, so, I grew up... I grew up... Only drinking soda, pretty much. There was always soda in the house. My parents... Never restricted it. Never made me drink anything else. And I was so used to it, and I got almost, like, addicted to it, that it's just all I ever drank. Um, and then, as I started to get a little bit older, right before I moved out of my parents' house, I started getting into coffee, which I hated growing up, but then my mother introduced me to hazelnut creamer, and it changed my life. I was like, oh, coffee can taste better than hot cocoa. I didn't know that. I want coffee all the time. So I got really addicted to coffee, and then I got to this point where... I realized soda was bad for you, and even though coffee is kind of bad for you in certain ways, um, I felt like soda was the lesser of two evils, and I was like, you know, now that I got coffee, I just want to be done with soda. So I actually, like, pretty much stopped drinking soda entirely um, for, like, the last, I don't know, maybe, like, ten years. Um, and I mostly just drink coffee. And I try to, you know, have a glass of water every day at least. And um, I drink other some other stuff here and there, but nothing crazy. Um, and I mostly don't drink soda. And I mostly drink coffee. And that's why Brew Crew. And that's why Nectar of the Gods. And all that stuff on the Twitch channel. Um, but I do get a craving every once in a while. Where I want the caffeine from coffee. But I don't want a coffee. I just want something cold that I can chug but has the caffeine. So every once in a while, I will have a soda. Maybe like, usually it's like, just like once a week, I'll have a can of soda or something. Um, every now and then, it's a little more than that. Maybe like twice a week on certain weeks, depending. Um, and if I go out to like, dinner, I'll get, a, I'll get a root beer, a bottle of root beer with my dinner. Um, usually. Or... If I go to like a cookout or a friend's house and they just have soda, I'll drink the soda. It's not a big deal. But as far as keeping it around the house and stuff, I don't I don't normally. I'll have a craving every once in a while, and like I said, I'll have like one can a week or something like that. You only drink like soda coke like once every few months. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as you, just not not quite as restricted. 
Anyway, your drink of choice is cocoa, milk, pear or fruit juice, or water. And yeah, those are all good. I've always really liked chocolate milk, too. But the thing about, like, cocoa or chocolate milk is whenever I would want those, whenever I'd be in the mood for those, I would just prefer coffee. Like, if I make my coffee sweet with hazelnut creamer, I just, I like it more than I like cocoa or chocolate milk. Not always. There are some circumstances in which I'll have, like, a chocolate milk or I'll have a hot cocoa or a hot chocolate or whatever. Um, and I just, like, have a craving for that, and I want just that. And there are times that I'll do, I don't know what it's actually called, but I call it a Dunkachino. Um, an ex-girlfriend back in the day turned me on to them, uh, and ordered me my first one, and it's basically just coffee and hot cocoa mixed together. Yeah, that. Cocoa coffee, exactly. So, anyway... But I do like coffee when it's made sweet. Sometimes it's too sweet. It's a bit much. But when it's made s sweet enough where it's on the same, you know, on par with like a, um, like a hot cocoa, then I kind of like it. I kind of love it. Um, but I also like my coffee strong. So the stuff that Orange ordered for me was pretty cool. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to show you You'll get a kick out of this. Yes, mocha is delicious. That's normally what I what I order. Um, let's go over to browser really quick. So I made a TikTok, right? That Mishra TikTok is over nine thousand plays. The power level's over nine thousand, which is kind of crazy, and it's getting me a bunch of followers. Like I haven't tried to get any followers at all, and I'm up to sixty four. Um. The other ones didn't do as well. They're at 438 and 321 because I didn't get them in early. I got the, the Mishra one in super early. But what I noticed today is right before the stream started, I uploaded that initial short that you made me for the Skeletal Swarming deck. Didn't think, didn't think it would do any better than just, you know, these other, these other spoiler cards. You get a couple hundred or whatever. Um, because it wasn't something special like the Mishra spoiler happening like right away when it was spoiled. That was something special. That's why this got a, a lot of views. So I didn't think it would really do that well. I just put it on there. I was I went to the bathroom while I was on my break. And I looked. And it's already up to 2,000 plays. <laughs> it's got 2,000 views on it, Finn. So. And I've got. There's one guy in there. <laughs> Keep seven. That's a lot of gold hounds. Who's asking me where they can see the deck list? Let's see what we can play with. 142 hearts on it already. Would you just look at it? So, what we learned today is that as much as I hate TikTok, I need to utilize TikTok. And I need... We need to try and make those shorts. In one way or another, we need to leverage shorts on the channel. I'm still going to do the spoiler shorts no matter what. And I'm going to put them on both YouTube and on TikTok. And I'm going to try to be as early as I can as they release them. So that we can get them to sort of go viral like this Mr. One did. But if the stuff that you make can go just as viral as that, just whenever not on a schedule not having to come up like this had this had we had to catch lightning in a bottle we had to be like oh they just announced it and i'm actually not busy and can just make it right now let's do it made it quick put it up before anybody else got their spoiler videos up and that's why it did so well but if if the shorts that you make the the quarantine clip stuff the the more comedy type stuff if, if though that can do just as well without having to be on a crazy schedule, just whenever one's done, we can just upload it. Then we definitely have to start utilizing those because I don't really care too much about TikTok, but if TikTok can grow us a fan base that will then come on over to Twitch and YouTube, like that's another way 
to grow our channels without spending any money. So just something to keep in mind. I do want to start trying to make those actual shorts as often as we can. And uh, even if I have to learn how to make them, I guess, even if I have to start paying you, uh, I definitely intend to start paying you, Finn. For those who are just watching this stream later and don't know, so Finn is, is my primary mod over on Twitch. That's how I met him. And uh, he's since got very involved uh, with all aspects of all the channels that Capricorn's on. And he helps out with a lot of the shorts. So if a, if a short is a spoiler, it's probably just me. But if it's anything else, then Finn probably made it. Just keep that in mind. So anyway, Finn, we need to start utilizing this for sure. Yes, or resolve. One or the other, or both, who knows. But anyway, I thought it was at least relevant to bring that up while I had you here. You did a really good job on, on that, that short, and it deserves to be doing as well as it as it is and so I'm proud because it's our channel but I'm also proud of you because you made it so you should be proud and let's see if it it seems to be going maybe maybe even faster than the Mishra short took off so I don't know this time tomorrow I guess we'll see we'll see uh, what it's got what it's looking like As for shorts, TikTok shit, I'll probably keep them a lot shorter shit posts. Kind of like the Twitch clips moments. I mean, whatever whatever you want to do. If you think there's an easy way to do something, you know, that's similar, but that's going to be shorter, we can just get them up more often. You do whatever. I'm willing to try whatever you want to try, Finn. Like I said, as soon as we hit 1k on YouTube, I'm willing to pay you what you had asked for before, which I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. But I remember we discussed it and I was cool with it. We just have to make sure we hit a, a 1,000 1, uh, subscribers on YouTube first. And again, for you guys, uh, you know, just watching this later, uh... You have to get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube before they monetize your channel. Which means anything we invest into the channel prior to that, we don't really see a return on that investment. So it's just a passion project. It's just putting in whatever we can and and just helping the channel be cool. Rather than, you know, making any money back from it at all. But once we hit 1,000 subscribers, it's a lot easier to invest money in the channel and make the channel better for everybody and for all of you guys watching. Um because we get returns on that investment as things are doing better because of what we invest in they get more views and the channel can earn more money that we can take that money and put it back into the channel and just keep rolling it over and, and growing so anyway enough yammering about the business because you know why we're all here we're not here for the business we're here for the fun let's uh let's play some magic Finn, you want to play a game against me? Probably not. I don't even think you have arena, do you? <laughs> I'll just I'll just jump into ranked. We better get to learn that resolve soon. And custom cards. Oh, do you have custom cards? Do you want me to do it on this stream? That's up to you. I I kind of assumed if there was was any, you'd want to save them for uh, Twitch, but. You still don't have arena installed so for anybody watching on youtube for the first time uh that hasn't been to the twitch channel I, I stream on twitch monday through friday and what we typically do is we have a discord and there's a link to the discord i believe in this video um, but if you join the discord we have a few different sections and one of them is custom cards and anyone on the Discord can submit custom cards. And if there are any custom cards while I'm streaming and the person that made the custom cards are in the chat, they're watching the stream, then we'll uh, we'll go to Discord, we'll check out the custom cards, and we'll talk about them. Let's see what we got. One, two, three, four of these boys. 
All right. So first up, we've got Gravios Metallic Giant. Um, and also, since you guys on YouTube haven't experienced this before, I, I want a little preface this. I just want to preface this a little bit. All of the cards that Finn has been creating recently, which I'm pretty sure all of the ones here are yours, Finn. Yeah. All of the all of the cards that Finn has been creating recently have been doing the whole like Godzilla cosmetic thing that happened back in Arcoria. So what he's been doing is designing cards that would be in a set, theoretically, but then designing them as Monster Hunter World cosmetics for those cards, the same way those Godzilla cosmetics were for the Ikoria cards. And it's been a really cool set of cards that he's been coming up with that we've been going over on Twitch, so very, very cool. But anyway, this is Gravios Metallic Giant, which is a cosmetic for Junvir Wall of Steel. This is a 2-6 legendary artifact wyvern, artifact creature wyvern, for four mana and is it colors. Has Defender and Ward 2. So 2 6, Defender, Ward 2 for 4. Other creatures you control with Defender get plus 1 plus 1. Whenever Genvir, Wall of Steel blocks a creature or is blocked by a creature, tap that creature and put a stun counter on it. Oh, that's so good. Pay 1, target creature you control with Defender can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. You may switch its power and toughness until end of turn. Oh man, this card is interesting, huh? This is like a super defender, Lord. I think this is probably the best defender enabler we've ever got. Like, okay, so without anything else on the field, it's a 2-6, Ward 2. And you can pay one to have it swing as a 2-6 Ward 2, or as a 6-2 Ward 2. That's crazy. So I think the idea is you block with your defenders, you stun counter out all of their attackers, and then you crack back for damage, and you switch their toughness to their power so you can crack back for a lot, unless they have blockers still, in which case you leave their toughness high so that your stuff doesn't die. But if they do block it, their stuff gets stun counters and probably doesn't kill your stuff because you have high toughness. So you just keep doing that till all their guys are stunned out and then it's safe to switch their toughness to their power and just alpha strike in for a win. That's really good. The fact that it just automatically buffs all the creatures with defender by plus one plus one and only costs one mana to make a guy attack is good. And I do like that you went in a different route rather than creatures with defender do damage based on their toughness rather than their power like is what normally happens instead you made it you can switch it so it's not it's not swinging as a 6-6 six, six. it's a 2-6 or a 6-2 and that's a big difference and I think it helps to balance the card a bit seems like it'd be really really good in in a defender deck like this would make me want to actually try to play defender and constructed for sure very cool card then we've got Gormagala, Blind Terror. This is a cosmetic for Kier Tim, Plague Spreader. 5-5 five, five Legendary Dragon for 6 mana in Demir colors. So 1 black, 1 blue, and 4. At the beginning of your end step, put a virus counter on each creature you don't control. Interesting, a virus counter, huh? Each opponent must attack with at least one creature each combat if able attacking creatures you don't control get minus two minus two for each virus counter on them it's actually pretty interesting it nerfs their attackers and if they don't go wide they have to swing with the thing with the virus counter and get the debuffs and let you just eat up their attackers with your blockers seems pretty interesting I actually think it's a little a little low power compared to all of the other ones you've been making though because they can just kill this with sorcery speed removal and then they you get nothing 
it was a six mana five five that they kill for it with a three mana spell and like yeah one of their creatures still has a virus counter on it but the virus counter doesn't do anything because this card isn't around to say that the creature gets negative effects from a virus counter that's true but I still I still think it's a little underpowered as a six mana five five that's not gonna do anything the turn it comes into play maybe if that's what you're banking on the idea that the counters stay and if you get the creature back it's back on track maybe you should build in uh, a way to get the creature back maybe you should do like an unearth or something like that not an unearth something that lets it stick what's what's the uh, persist Maybe you should do Persist. Something like that. Maybe it should be Persist. In fact, maybe you could have the minus one, minus one counter theme kind of worked into that since persist give minus one minus one counters and this ability is giving minus two minus two maybe instead you have the ability give minus one minus one counters and then you have this thing have persist and then you have something else that references minus one minus one counters Like, what if you didn't call them virus counters? What if it was just, at the beginning of your end step, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature you don't control? Each opponent must attack with at least one creature each combat at Fable. Attacking creatures you don't control get minus, get a minus one, minus one counter for each minus one, minus one counter on them. So they... Re the, the minus one minus one counters replicate like a virus um but then because you, Gormagala has persist it gets minus one minus one counters and then you've been really really good at finding ways to like uh in the past to sort of um what's the word I'm looking for like synergize and balance it you did this with a persist creature a while back. Let me see if I can find it. It was very, very elegantly made, and I'm trying to remember exactly what the wording was. Protection from creatures in minus one. No, not that one. The persistent infect creatures you control with death touch have persistent infect. Whenever a creature dies, if it had counters on it, its controller gets a poison counter this because it comes back with a minus one minus one counter on it from persist which means now its text can work negatively against you and i really liked how this card balanced that maybe you could do something similar here i'm just trying to think of ways that make it more interesting and slightly more powerful because I do think it's a little underpowered the way it is but it's a cool idea for sure then we've got Shigaru Magala Perfection this is a cosmetic for Graham Time the Pandemia it's a 5-5 legendary elder dragon with flying vigilance and trample for 6 mana Six mana and Abzan colors. So one green, one black, one white, and three. For a 5-5 five, five Flying Vigilance Trample. That's a big boy. Gram Time, the Pandemia, gets plus one, plus one for each attacking creature you control. Interesting. It's just attacking creatures, not all, all the creatures you control. So it's not always going to get that buff. Only during combat. Whenever you attack, Put X minus one minus one counters divided as you choose among any number of creatures you don't control, where X is twice the amount of attacking creatures you control. Oh Jesus. That is busted.
I like that it does something the turn it comes into play. But I like also like that this card is not super busted and can't do super crazy things until you untap with it. Like, if you are not attacking with this, you're not like, it's not like insane. But I do like that the turn it comes down, you get some value off of it in case they use removal on it when they untap. Because you slam it, and just like the new Mishra card, it doesn't have to be attacking in order to trigger that attack trigger. So if you just go wide with a bunch of creatures, say you got six creatures, and then you slam Shigaru Magala, and you attack with your six creatures, you're going to put, what, 12 minus one minus one counters? Oh boy. That's pretty crazy. That is really powerful, actually. If this was just top end of a token deck, if a fall of the cards in your deck that made creatures could make two creatures for one card, you know, it was very, uh, very token deck, wedding announcement, that sort of stuff. And then you just slam this and swing, like, oh my god. They need instant speed removal, or they're pretty much just toasted. At that point, you wipe out their whole board, and then, like, even if they untap and use sorcery speed removal, they're still toast. And even if they wrath the board and you top deck this, it's not a dead card because it's a 5-5 flying vigilance trampled dragon. So you can still play it and say, hey, have the removal after your sweeper, or I still can win. Even by itself. Like... Even if it just swings by itself with no other creatures, you still get to put two minus one minus one counters on something. And it swings as a 6-6 six, six flying Vigilance Trample. That's great. I think this card is crazy good. It's possible it's a little too good, but at six mana? I don't know. I think that might be right. Token decks that want to go wide, probably going to have their board wrath before they hit six mana, right? If this was 5 mana for the same ability, even on a smaller body, I'd be worried. But I think at 6 mana, it's like, I think it requires you to jump through just enough hoops to get there. Uh, that it's not busted. Very cool card. I like it a lot. You're so good at making cards. You're so good, Finn. Kirin Phantom Beast. This is a cosmetic for Watto Peace Maintainer. Are we talking like Watto from the Phantom Menace from Star Wars? Don't lie to me. Don't you lie to me, boy. You don't know what I'm talking about? Wait, you haven't seen the Star Wars movie? The Star Wars movies? Hold up. Rewind this spin. Please tell me you've seen all the Star Wars movies. You don't like sci-fi? How can you not like sci-fi, Finn? Sci-fi is glorious. Sci-fi is fantasy, except it's it's fantasy that tries to convince you it could happen one day. Sci-fi and fantasy are very close together. It's just the setting that's really different. But the hero's story, you know, the three-act structure, all that stuff... You just don't watch movies. Well, we're going to have to have some kind of a stretch goal or something. Maybe when we finally get a Patreon where we make you watch Star Wars. What? The last time you watched any movie was eight or nine years ago? That's crazy. Is there, There's got to be at least a movie that's like your favorite movie. 
that you don't mind. There, have, there has to be like some movies that you really like. And it's just they're few and far between, right? Bruce Almighty? Bruce Almighty is a funny movie. I like that. What about the Lord of the Rings movies? You like fantasy and stuff. You play a lot of fantasy games, it seems at least. Is it too slow for you? To make you fall asleep? wasn't your cup of tea so you did watch them though just curious or did you think it wasn't for you and so you didn't watch them okay there must have at least been parts you liked right Harry Potter's a little different. I can understand. Like, I like Harry Potter fine, but I could al also see why certain people would be turned off by it. It is a little bit childish, especially in the beginning. You don't remember anything of it? I like the scene with the Balrog a lot. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. Eventually, one day, when we have a Patreon for this goddamn channel, we're gonna have stretch goals. At certain subscribers, you're gonna have to watch a movie. That is one of my favorite movies. But you're going to get paid for it. So when we hit a certain... Certain threshold... On the Patreon... You get a raise... For how much money you make. But the stipulation of that raise is... <laughs> is this the... The stretch... Part of the stretch goal is you have to... You have to watch a movie. It has to be, um, maybe it's Star Wars, maybe it's something else, but we'll, we'll find a short list of some of my favorite movies that, you know, yeah, that is a long time, like when they came out pretty much, so we'll make a short list and at certain stretch goals for the Patreon, you know, it will be a raise for Finn. Every single one of them will be a raise for you. So we're not, we're not just making you watch the movie for nothing, but also a part of that stretch goal will be that you have to watch one of my favorite movies. And we'll, we'll come up with that list, and we'll do, you'll know the order ahead of time. You'll know what movie is the next movie, that kind of thing. I think that's something we should do. Because movies are an important part to me. It's an important, important part of me um and the movies that i quote are important and that's where like the sound clips come from and stuff so we'll make sure you get a raise each time and work that in into it so that you don't consider it not worth your time but uh when they came out on tv for the first time or so i'm not i'm not gonna like make you watch a ton of movies like constantly or any of that shit if you don't like movies i'm not gonna do that to you but I will pick a handful of some of my favorite movies and we'll do a watch along when we hit certain tiers and you'll, you'll get you'll get a raise in the money you make for the stuff that you do for the channel eventually the stuff that I'm paying you for whether it's the shorts or whether it ends up being more than the shorts eventually we'll we'll get to that but but we'll have to do a watch along for one of my favorite movies each time you get a raise that's that'll be that'll be a thing we'll do that anyway Enough yammering. Enough yammering. Alright. Magic the Gathering. I'm supposed to be ending this stream right now, but we're gonna do one more. One more game. We're gonna do one more game, and then we'll call it. I didn't look at Kieran? Hold on a second. What do you mean I didn't look at Kieran? I thought I... I didn't go over all of them? Hold on. 
I thought I went over all of them. I must have got distracted. Uh, you're right. You're right. We got sidetracked by Watto. So Watto is the name of a dumb alien character in episode one of Star Wars, The Phantom Menace. Which wasn't the first one that came out, but it's the first one in the nine movie saga, like chronologically. So they came out with A New Hope, and then Empire Strikes Back, and when Empire Strikes comes uh Empire Strikes Back came out, that's when everybody found out that A New Hope wasn't actually the first episode because they called Empire Strikes Back episode 5 and everyone was like wait there were more episodes before A New Hope what and then they retconned A New Hope to be episode 4 and then they did episode 6 Return of the Jedi and 4, 5, and 6 was just one trilogy to stand on its own but everyone talked for years about, well, where's 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3? And then eventually they made them as prequels. So then they made episode 1, which Watto is in. It's a dumb alien slave handler. Uh, and then they made episode 2 and episode 3. And then more years went by. Disney bought Star Wars. And then Disney made 7, 8, and 9. Which I have mixed feelings about. Anyway, Kieran, Phantom Beast. It's even called Phantom Beast, like the Phantom Menace. <laughs> Finn. Watto, the Phantom Beast. I love you. That's the name of the movie that he's in. The Phantom Menace. Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Anyway, 6-6 six, six legendary Elder Unicorn. There are Elder Unicorns? It's in Bant Colors for 5 mana, 6-6 six, six Vigilance. Watto Peace Maintainer enters the battlefield tapped. It doesn't untap during your untap step. Whenever you lose life, you untap Watto. Interesting. Whenever one or more creatures you control are targeted by a spell or ability for the first time each turn, you may counter that spell or ability. Card's super interesting. So it comes into the battlefield tapped. And as long as you never lose life, it just sits there tapped. It can't do anything other than protect your creatures. And itself. As soon as you lose life, it untaps. It becomes a 6 6 vigilance. And at that point in time, it won't ever tap again if it has a vigilance. Which means you don't worry, have to worry about losing life to untap it anymore. Uh, unless they find a different way to tap it down, like stun counters, which do, do tend to be prevalent in your creative cards lately, so that is a thing. But I think this card is very elegant and interesting. It's gonna suck against mill decks, though. You gotta side it out against mill decks, because they just, they'll never attack you. But even if it doesn't untap and start swinging for 6 and blocking for 6, like, you still have the static ability, right? Whenever one or more creatures you control are targeted. The more I think about this card, I think I'd make it a 4-drop, honestly. Because your opponent can play around it. If it's only the static ability, if this thing just stays tapped while your opponent figures out how to deal with things, then, like... I think five's a little too much. Whenever one or more creatures you control are targeted, you counter it. Like, they can just let it sit there, let you build up more of a board, and then wipe the board at an opportune time. And you didn't really get anything for your five drop. I feel like it's got enough hoops to jump through with untapping it and stuff that four is fine. Because, like, your opponent can just decide, okay, I don't want his 6-6 six, six Vigilance to untap, so I just won't attack him. Right? And that's pretty good, making the opponent not be able to attack you. But, 
if the opponent has the choice, that makes it a little less powerful. You know? I think because the opponent has the choice, it's kind it's kind of the similar similar to what like why charms are good is why this isn't as good. Charms are good even though each ability on a charm is kind of not good enough to be worth the mana you're paying usually. It's the versatility of whatever you need in the moment you get and that's what makes them good. And this is kind of the opposite. Even though what you're getting is really good, like your opponent gets to choose how and when you get that. So if they're not trying to be aggressive, if they're just trying to control the board, like they can choose not to swing, not to let this untap. They can choose to wait until they are put they put themselves in a better position to work around it before they attack you if they want to. It's not always opponent's choice. Remember shock lands or fetch lands? Yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. I wasn't thinking of that. Yeah, you're right. So this is probably pretty good then. Yeah. You're right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. Alright, what are we going to play? I think we're just going to play... What's been our best deck? Actually, let's play House of the Dragon. So I had someone comment on a video recently. Telling me that this deck sucks because it only had... 7 Trilands in it. And that's not enough for a Domain deck. And I believe that person is wrong because they are overlooking, first of all, the Thrawn portals, which count as land types, and they're overlooking um, the fact that Sprouting Goblins can find them. So let's end on this deck. I will keep this. Lead with a Proving Ground. Make sure we get into the right scene here. Alright, we'll go Sulphurus Springs into this Courier's Briefcase, right? So if he doesn't flip, this is just as good at blocking the Delver as the Shigeki would be. And if it does flip, neither one can block anyway. This helps us ramp. I think we want the Thrawn portal to be white or blue. We have more things in the deck that are white, but we have a Solkanar Sol right here that are bl that's blue, so... Let's do white. And then... Let's play Sprouting, Sprouting Goblin. We'll find something. Syncopate. Sorry. You overlooked the fact that I had a treasure. Alright, we need blue. So what, what would we prefer? White and green or black and red? I guess black and red, right? We'll grab the lounge. And swing one. Whew.
So our ley line binding would be only two mana right now. So much for that dude's theory that <laughs> you need more than seven. Swing up the boys. Try playing out a Shigeki. Would you like to spell pierce it, sir? Nope. We're trying to run him out of counter spells. It's looking like that's not gonna happen. But we are gonna be able to raise. Four turns. Four turns. So he's gonna kill us one turn before we kill him if our board stays looking this way. Oh, he's a body gin. Interesting. Lottie Dottie, we likes the hottie. Does he have a counter spell? Probably. So what do we do about that? It's tricky, tricky, tricky. We just gotta bait his counters and be able to land a meat hook next turn. I think that's our only chance. Pulsing. Interesting. Maybe I should have went with my first plan. My first plan was to swing with the Sprouting Goblin, and if he blocked it with the Hottie Gin, followed up with the Meat Hook. But it was risky, because if he had a counterspell in his hand for the Meat Hook, then I throw away my Sprouting Goblin for nothing. No tax. Consider. Wow, he bends an impulse. And we're dead. Well, we can't end like that. We were actually doing pretty well, but... It's very difficult for this deck to win against Mono Blue. Or really any deck like this. It's just the way Mono, deck, uh, mono Blue decks are built. They stop all of the things that are important. But we have a pretty good win rate against everything else. And I still think we got about a 50% win rate against Mono Blue. Tell you what we haven't had an issue with. Having enough land types for Leyline Binding. Looks like somebody was wrong. Play Jetmere's Garden. Follow it up with Xander's Lounge. Hold up Leyline Binding. Pass. We just need to top deck one land. Just one land. In fact, we should have top decked another by now. So we're a bit behind the curve. Alright. We're gonna binding this boy. Come on. Send me a land. Thank you. Sprouting Goblin. Grab our next land. We need green for sure. And black. So we'll just grab Zayatora's here. The black lets us cast Cruelty or Meat Hook without having to tap into the Pain Land here. And the green gets us closer to being able to actually hard cast Titan of Industry. Overlook Harvester. Do we make him 
Zack is harvesting. I don't think so. If we swing, offer the trade, he doesn't want to take it. He goes to 19. And then we just do this. We find another green source. I guess we'll just go, uh, like this for now. So next turn we could meet Hook if we wanted to. It's probably a bad idea. We could top deck a land and play Cruelty. Or we could Riveteer's Charm. Yes, we will trade. Thank you very much. Soul of Wind Grace. Sure. Might be killing that Soul of Wind Grace. The Gravitator's Charm. Or we might just do this. Let's get rid of. Ugh. I will. We're going to take at least eight. Three from the Cruelty on Chapter 2 and five from the Wind Grace if we don't block it with the Goblin. But maybe we do block it with the Goblin. Nah. I think we're fine. Yeah, we'll just, we'll take the hit. We've got a Titan coming, so we can come back from it. We've also got Neo Mask, but we have plenty of life gain. We're going to Riveteer's Charm that thing away. of the fight rigging he's going to be able to smash us from four for four next turn but that's all he's going to be able to do and i don't know what that card is and we will never know but he ain't playing it so next turn we can get back the soul of wind grace from him or we can get back the underdog if we want him to if we don't want him to keep blitzing. But I feel like the Soul of One Grace makes the most sense. He did kill the cruelty, so I guess that's not a thing. Now we need to get a little lucky. take three it's gonna be
be close. He can get us to two with the underdog. And we can Titan of Industry to gain some life back. Fight Riggedy, you can get us to one. Goodness, none of them are pain lands. None of the ones we need for Titan. Oh, the sprouting goblins. Return something. Fight rigging. Get out of here. You're gone forever. Titan. We're going to go a 4-4 four, four in case he's got spot removal, and we're going to gain 5 life. <sighs> I couldn't risk him being able to exile the Titan with a shield counter on it or something like that and not having a blocker. This is the safest route. Another Titan. Alright, he destroys our Kami War. And what? Makes it 4 4 or grabs a shield counter. Replays the fight rigging. That's pretty good. We can make him sack the Titan, which is nice. Hi, Bandy. Bandy's just laying down by my feet. He misses me. Well. This does not have Vigilance, which means we cannot swing in with it. One, two, three, one, two. Could Meat Hook to kill everything except his Titan, but it would also kill our everything. That's what we need to do. Wait a minute. Nope, because then his Titan is, becomes an 8-8. And we have to chump block it with our Titan. And that's very bad. So we actually can't do that. turn. We actually have to make him sack the Titan, but I want to wait until he targets it with the fight rigging, hopefully. Despair? Ow. He thinks he's got us. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm gonna wait until he attacks. If I kill it before he attacks, he might not attack with everything. means we don't get to blow him out. And we want to blow him out. We desperately want to blow him out. <sighs> this is a close game. Problem 
is our Titan does not survive. Or I should say, our Titan can't finish him off. But also, if we hold back to block... If he's got removal, he kills our Titan and we can't block his underdog next turn, we're screwed. But we kind of have to do this. Three. The only way we have a chance, we're going to hold this to cycle, is if he doesn't have removal. If he has removal, he just kills the Titan, swings in for three, and we're dead. But if he doesn't have removal, we might actually be able to beat him. That is way too much. Yeah, it doesn't matter, dude. Well, the deck performed well. It just was toe to toe at the end. And he top decked better than me. We uh had a little bit too much land. It looks like he got more land than us, but really most of that was from his Soul of One Grace. And the fact that he drew so many extra cards off of, like, Invoke. He invoked twice, didn't he? No, maybe it was only once. Yeah, he only drew one card off the Invoke. Although he did have two Soul of One Graces at different points. What do you think is going to get banned tomorrow? Alright. This has to be the last game no matter what. I'm a half an hour past my curfew. Right now. But I don't want to end on a loss. Can't end on a loss. My very first YouTube stream. Can't do it. You think Invoke's gone? Man, I would love it if Invoke was gone. Should I craft them all right now, just in case? We can keep this. We'll lead with the Glade. Then we'll throw on Portal for red and play probably Shigeki. I would love it if Invoke got banned. I don't think uh, Fable is enough of a problem anymore to get banned. So I think that one's fine. I think Fable and Wedding Announcement aren't broken enough yet. I think they're less... I think they're less busted now than they were before rotation. So I think they're okay. I would like to see Meat Hook Massacre go. Even though it's a staple of some of my favorite decks right now. I do think it's kind of problematic. Alright. Slowing up Fable here. No attacks. Just ramp into that Kami War as quick as possible. Why you think Invoke was a foil to the Raffine meta, Finn? Maybe. I may discard cards. I will discard cards, thank you very much. 
But what? <laughs> Make a little treasure boy. I think we hold up Riveteer's charm. And we hit the Kami of Tramteens. But we're gonna wait until he potentially puts counters on it. I don't think Hottie Jin needs to be banned either. Pleasant. Right, so we'll go to seven. Gotta hit whatever can attack right now. And that's that. I don't think it's Hottie Bin Hottie Jin that's the problem with Mono Blue to be honest. Turn something to its owner's hand. Yep. Five mana. We need to not die. We could get back a Sarah Paragon if we're willing to take a point of damage and go to two. But that seems a little bit ballsy. We could Soul of Wind Grace. We have no land to get back. Or we could fable again. Not have good blockers. might have been wrong. I think maybe we should have... I think Soul of Wind Grace is right, but using the treasure might be right. Because this way he only needs to get rid of one of our blockers, and the Naturalist could kill us. Which is definitely a problem. Alright, so 5-5, five, 2-2. Five, two, two. I mean... Seems obvious. We 
weird that he would do it that way. I guess he gets back his Kami and draws a card, right? But we get our Ogachi now. Definitely can't spend any life. So we'll just do that in the turn. And if he doesn't have removal, I think we actually got him. Even just at two here. I made discard cards. Difficult decision. I don't want to spend the life. But I would love to get back that Sarah Paragon. We'll do it like this. Ah, we got him. Went down to two. We still got him. I wonder what he thought we were going to get, though. Cemetery Desecrator, we could have. I guess that's probably enough. We needed the life life link. We could have got naturalist. I think Paragon was actually what we wanted, though. We get Paragon, and then we play Loam Speaker from the yard as an extra blocker. Does make us go down to one, but unless we swing with this guy first and then use the two treasures to play Loam Speaker, I don't know. He's pretty wide. I don't think I would have scooped there, honestly. He's so close to killing me. But he did. Alright. So here we are. That was our very first test stream to celebrate 500 subscribers on YouTube. Appreciate you guys hanging out, checking out the stream. Um... Yeah, this was a nice test run to get ready for a thousand. I learned a lot. Do think chances are likely that we'll do the 1,000 subscriber YouTube stream over on Twitch? Um, just because it seems like that's where that's where my community wants to be for live streams anyway. Um, I did want to test this out. You know, I wanted to see if like maybe if I streamed on YouTube, since YouTube had twice as many you know subscribers as twitch has followers right now for me that maybe maybe it'd get more people popping in or i stream in both yeah i guess i could simul stream technically we're not allowed to it's like a twitch thing that you're not allowed to technically if you're an affiliate but from what I've gathered, I've been researching it, and it's not enforced in any way. And they actually let you, and a lot of people feel like it's kind of a, an outdated, archaic rule. And the reason that they don't enforce it is because they know that. And they just haven't got around to technically updating the rule at all. So, maybe we will go that way. We'll see. But as a test run, it was nice to see what differences there might be in YouTube. Really, the only difference is it's just missing a lot of the ways that we can interact with people in chat that we can in Twitch. Whether it's emotes or uh, channel point redemptions or like a lot of our bot stuff that we can do where we can bring up certain things in chat that we need like links and all that stuff. 
I don't think uh, we can make Neville react at all. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I uh, go to go to the chat right now and I go like this, yeah, it's not going to do anything. So I like the idea that we can live stream on YouTube. I think there will be certain moments, milestone moments, that it will be nice to do that on YouTube. Um, but I think for the most part, we should stick to Twitch or we should just do the simul stream thing. And even if we do the simul stream thing, I don't think we should do that all the time. I think if there was a stream popping up on YouTube every single day, it would become kind of less special. And, um kind of shift the focus of what our YouTube channel is supposed to be about, which is the more long form curated content and the quarantine clip shorts and not necessarily the live stuff. So I think, I think we will, we will try to, you know, do live streams on YouTube every once in a while for milestone moments. And those will probably be simul streams if we can do that. Um, and for the most part, we'll just keep streaming over on Twitch, but we learned a lot today. We got to test some stuff out. I had to test out a lot of stuff in the beginning as far as like, how do I start the stream? How do I schedule it to be a start a, a stream on a certain day and then make sure I'm actually streaming to that same video that's been posted? Um, Cause I can't just start my stream like normal, like I would on Twitch. I have to do a thing where I go into like a scheduled streams uh, section, which is just new to me. Um, so I had to learn how to navigate that and make sure I wasn't just starting a completely separate stream than the one that's been listed there for a week. Um, but we learned all the things. We got through it. I was I was pretty tired all day, so I don't know if I was my normal self, but I appreciate everybody hanging out. And now I'm going to end the stream, and I'm going to go finish doing more stuff for the channel. Let's, uh, let's see. Are we still at? 569 oh we're up to 570 so somebody subbed John Stephen Lee Hartman subbed while we were doing our live stream I'm not sure if they popped in and said anything in live stream I don't think they did but yeah we're at 570 so Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. It's weird not having to think about raiding. I'm so used to Twitch. But I still appreciate everybody that uh, stopped by and gave their comments and joined in for a bit. Appreciate you being here, Finn. And I'm glad we were able to sort out the mod access on YouTube. And uh, that's going to be it. So thanks for hanging out. We hit 500. We're almost at 600. We're on our way to 1,000. So that's all that matters. Let's, let's get her done. And... Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, always make them scoop.